okay, we're here. But, you know, there, there needs to be a joy. There needs to be a joy in worship. There needs to be a joy in communion. There needs to be a joy coming in to be together in this place, in every place that is the Lord's house. So as I'm praying, I'm thinking about that joy um, and kind of smiling to myself, but we need to feel that sense of joy that we're here and that we have God to turn to, honestly, in our darkest moments. Uh, you know, uh, when I get to mention someday, and it probably will happen, since I'm already forgetting things, uh, you know, I want to know that I'm not alone. So that, that, that sense of joy, I think that's critically important. That doesn't count as discerning either. Um, I just feel moved this morning. All right, so. Uh, You start walking up by his lawn. <laughs> Please let us give <coughs> to the church so that we might do God's work here locally, especially, but also where possible in the world itself. Amen.
serve the world in your way. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have this little, uh, we have uh, five or six real little ones at Salem. We don't have, we've got two teenagers. We've got five or six real little ones. They're, and that's not, a, a lot of churches now have real little ones. So we've got this one little girl, her name is Jordy. She's a little blonde, she's about this tall. She can't be but about, I don't know, three at the most. But her family gets there just about two seconds after the service starts. And Jody comes running down the aisle and to the front to, to where they sit. And I keep thinking, we should all come into church running like Jordy does, coming into church. Yes, I, I just, her enthusiasm absolutely uh, is fabulously wonderful. I hope she keeps it as she gets to be a teenager and says, I'm not going to church. <laughs> Our song is number 587, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, 587.
From the temple of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hand, start the festival and march around the altar. You are my God, and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good, and his love is eternal. And now I'm going to read from Acts 5, verses 27 to 32. <clears throat> they brought the apostles in, made them stand before the council, and the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders not to teach in the name of this man, he said. But see what you have done? You have spread your teachings all over Jerusalem, and you want to make us responsible for his death. Peter and the other apostles answered, We must obey God, not men. The God from our ancestors raised Jesus from the death, from death after you had killed him and nailed him to a cross. God raised him to his right side as leader and savior to give the people of Israel the opportunity to repent and have their sins forgiven. We are witnesses to these things, we and the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to those who obey him. And then I'm going to read from Revelation 1, verses 4 to 8. <clears throat> Greetings to the seven churches. From John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace be yours from God, who is, who was, and who is to come, from the seven spirits in front of his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the first to be raised from death, who is also the ruler of the kings of the world. He loves us, and by his sacrificial death, he has freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To Jesus Christ be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, including those who pierced him. All people on earth will mourn over him, so, it, so shall it be. I am the first and the last, says the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. This is a reading from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, and this reading uh, occurs, or the uh, what the reading describes, occurs the same night uh, that we have been to the tomb and everything. This is later in the evening. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to, the, to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm not 100% sure why I'm so happy this morning. If it's just because the sunshine, if it's because I snuck in an extra 15 minutes of sleep at the Muddy Atlanta Motel, <laughs> or what it is exactly, but for some reason, uh, I, I, I feel a great sense of joy this morning in just being here. Um, probably because of the realization that of what Easter really brings. Probably because of the realization that Jesus truly did die for our sins and for our salvation so that we have hope 
the song this morning mentioned, um, come in if you are righteous. We know that righteousness with God's eyes is believing in Jesus and according to Paul, uh, confessing and believing in the resurrection. Therefore, we are, because of our beliefs, a righteous people, if you will. So, therefore, I would expect that we would be at the banquet at the end. John, um, the book of Revelation is very difficult for me. I have a very difficult time with all of these images. Um, and because I do, I stay away from it most of the time. But he's talking about, and this is John that wrote the gospel, by the way. If this is John the same. I must have turned it off. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Okay, so this is John, um, and John uh, is the same John that wrote the gospel. It's the same John that calls himself the one that's loved by Jesus. And in this particular passage, John is talking to us about Jesus coming in the clouds, and everyone will see him, and everyone will then uh, feel bad and repent of uh, because of his death. Uh, and he says that if the disciples forgive someone's sins, they are forgiven. And if they do not forgive their sins, they are not forgiven. But what's important here, I think, is that we have the image of Jesus breathing the Holy Spirit on the disciples. It is a symbolic act that Jesus is doing. You see, here's the challenge. We have to take these disciples who are fishermen and people that have kind of, um, they're not on the forefront of society as far as being out there and able to speak well. In fact, uh, one of the letters, and I can't remember which one, if it was the letters to the Corinthians, um, talks about, uh, uh, talks about uh, uh, Peter and says that uh, he doesn't speak well and he doesn't present well. And the point being that God looks at what's on the inside, not on the outside. So we are talking about people who are not necessarily on the forefront. They're not charismatic. They're not the leaders of the day. They aren't the people that you would walk up to and say, hey man, I want to hang with you. These are the people that hung with Jesus for three years that Jesus was teaching. But now we have to take these, these disciples and we have to turn them, if you will, into fearless chargers. We have to turn them into people that can go out now and spread this word. We have to Turn them into people. All these guys up here that you're looking at in this picture. We have to turn them into people now that can go out there and spread the word and teach what Jesus has taught to a group of people, a population, all the way across the region, all the way across Rome, that doesn't really want to hear the story. People aren't jumping up and down to hear the story. Kind of sounds like today, doesn't it? Yeah, people are jumping up and down to hear the story, you know? If you serve a, 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 a good buffet, you might get a couple of extra people coming in. But they're not jumping up and down to hear the story. So there's going to be a battle that these guys are going to have to fight, if you will, a battle that for some of them will end up, when they're uh, uh, martyred, will end up in death, we have to somehow give them, if you will, courage. That's the challenge. How do we give them courage? How do we turn them into people that are going to go out there no matter what? In the sales business, we used to say, man, I'm chewing on rocks for lunch. We're going to go out this afternoon. We're going to get them. We're chewing on rocks. I never quite figured that out, but okay, I'll go out. Uh, but so you get this sense of them having to go out and do this. And so Jesus 
breathes on them the Holy Spirit or the symbolism of the Holy Spirit. Now, they will not get the Holy Spirit until when? What's my holiday? You know this. When's red? When do we use red? Pentecost. Thank you. Pentecost. They will not get the... And remember the scene of Pentecost? The fire comes in the room. The fire... I would have been out the window. The fire comes in the room. And they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which then is God's power to go out. But remember what we've already said. They also have the confidence to go out. Why? Because they knew Jesus. Because they knew Jesus. But what's critical is the sense of the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit that comes into them so they can go out and spread this word, which they will do. I would argue with you, or suggest to you, is probably a better way to say it, I'll leave the argument for my wife, but, uh, <laughs> but I would suggest to you that, that, that all of us have this power of the Holy Spirit. I would suggest to you that when we step out into this world, we all have this power of the Holy Spirit. We all have God's power inside of us to go out and do what it is that we must do. We all have that power to go out and spread God's word. It's just very challenging to do it because the people usually don't want to hear. And the word that we use for that is evangelism. And when you say evangelism, everybody goes, no, no, get back, get back. <laughs> but you see, we have the power and the responsibility to share our faith in subtle ways. I'm not saying you've got to go out and beat people over the head, but just in subtle ways, in subtle ways to do that. You know, offer to pray with somebody if there's a big problem, you know, in subtle ways. So the power of the Holy Spirit is, is very, very important, and we have it, and they had it, and because of that, they were able to go out. Now, this is a very interesting reversal here. There's a very interesting reversal in the scriptures this morning. Um, there are several groups of Jewish people in power. The Pharisees, we know about the Pharisees. We know about the scribes. They were the legal people, wrote everything down. Then there's another group called the Sadducees. The Sadducees. And the Sadducees were very, uh, uh, they were very, they, they could have been from, uh, what's the state, Missouri, the Show Me State, is that right? They, the, um, if, unless the laws are written down, we're not going to accept them. Uh, we don't accept anything that's come down orally. I don't care what your great grandfather did and who he knew, and he was a. I don't. If, if it's not written down, we're not accepting it. So the Sadducees, um, they see the apostle. Or the, I keep saying, I get the two words that are interchangeable: the, the disciples and the apostles. Disciples, followers, apostle called directly by God. Certainly the, the disciples, the 12, the 11 now, they will bring someone else into the fold. There will be 12 again. They are certainly apostles. I refer to them as disciples. But that's the group I'm talking about. So the, the disciples are out and they're preaching and they're, uh, people are hearing them and they're all over Jerusalem and they're all over Judea and they're, uh, they're out there talking. And what's beginning to happen is that the people are beginning to see them and they're beginning to perform miracles. They're beginning to heal people. And they're becoming so popular in their healing that people are lying people on the streets in, on mats and on little beds just so that if the shadow of Peter passes by and even falls on them, they will be healed. That's a very major statement. In fact, people are coming from all over, everywhere, into Jerusalem in order for the apostles, the disciples, to heal them. 
What's the problem? The Sadducees are jealous. The Sadducees, who are part of the powerful elite of the Jewish faith, are jealous. Wait a minute. You can't do this. And what did we say when we were talking about, uh, about the disciples going and hiding and Peter not admitting that he knew Jesus? What did we say would happen if he admitted that he would know Jesus? He would be killed. And what happens if you kill the leader and you don't kill the rest of the people? They go on. They go on. Right? Peter surfaces as the kind of the main person we hear about. It becomes Peter. This is before Paul now. This is Peter. In fact, the Catholics, I believe, will say Peter is the first bishop. Will they not? Is that not what they say? Peter is the first bishop. So you see, the Sadducees now, we're reversing this. Now the Sadducees have something to fear. The Sadducees have something to fear. So they decide they need to do something about this. So they call, um, they call the disciples, they arrest the disciples, and they put them in the public jail. So they're in the public jail. Now that night, Scripture doesn't tell us specifically who comes. If is it an angel from God? Is it an accomplice of the of the uh, disciples? But one way or another, someone lets them out and tells them to go back and continue to preach in the temple. So the very next morning, very early in the morning, we find the disciples again preaching in the temple. Now, the Sadducees call together the elders and they have a council. And they say, go get the disciples and bring them. And lo and behold, they go to get the disciples and what? They're not there. The jail's locked up. The guards are still all, the disciples are not there. Someone has seen the disciples in the temple and says to them, I have seen the disciples preaching in the temple. So they go and get the disciples and bring them back. Now, here's a very interesting point. You all right? Okay. They go and they get... Where's Mom this morning? Really? Oh, I just noticed that right now. Um, so they, they go to get them, um, and, they, uh, 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 and they go to bring them back. And here's what I started to say. Um, they don't use any force. They don't dare use any force. Because if they use force, they're afraid that they will be stoned by the people because the disciples are so popular now. And what a reversal. Now it's the Sadducees that are afraid that Jesus, not Jesus, that the disciples in the name of Jesus are going to turn this onto them. In other words, they're afraid that the disciples are going to talk about the injustice of the killing of Jesus, right? What do we have here in the killing of Jesus? We have a crime that is legitimized by the government, but there's no facts behind the crime. There's no reason to have done this, right? So here's our injustice. They're afraid that the disciples are going to cry out with, for justice for something that was unjust that was done to Jesus. And if they do that, that the people will come back on them and they will be killed. So now we've got a total reversal. We've got a total reversal. Now we've got the very people that took part in killing Jesus afraid that it's going to come back to haunt them. And so they're trying to stop all this. I told you not to talk to people in the name of Jesus. We told you that. And what did the disciples say? What did they say? We obey God, not man. Did you pick that up in the reading? We obey God, not man. <coughs> Excuse me. We obey God, not man. In other words, you can do whatever you need to do to us, but we're not stopping. Isn't that what they're saying? 
You see, they show us that God continues to cry out against 